Sources tell CBS News the U.S. has postponed delivery of some ammunition to Israel. One U.S. official says that holdup is to send a message to the Israeli government about the Biden administration's opposition to the operation in Rafah. Ed O'Keefe joins us now from the White House. Uh, talk, talk to us about this operation in Rafah and how it is affecting um, some of the administration's decision making. I mean, we have just learned that it paused at least one shipment of aid to Israel, which is unprecedented. It is. CBS News has learned uh, per two U.S. officials that there was a shipment paused in recent days. One of those officials telling CBS News it was designed to send a message to the Israeli government about the Biden administration's concern with that ongoing military operation now into Rafah, a sign, again, of, of how the dynamic between the United States and Israel is changing. While the president and the prime minister may spend time on the phone together, at least yesterday, which is always seen as a good sign of, of good communication if the two leaders are doing it, that now actual military equipment may be slowed at the least has uh, is, is got to worry Israel and certainly its most ardent backers on Capitol Hill. But it's a sign, too, that the administration's trying to send signals, even if it's quietly, uh, in that kind of a way, to Israel to say, don't do this, uh, as we've been trying to tell you in all sorts of ways over the last several weeks. It is something that continues to occupy a lot of time here at the White House. The president himself saying very little about this uh, publicly for fear of upsetting the ongoing talks, uh, today instead focused on Holocaust Remembrance Day and giving a more formal uh, set of remarks on his concerns about anti-Semitism. That's right. And President Biden has been pushing Israel not to invade Rafa at all. Today, White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre had this to say about Israel's operation. What I will say is the Israeli government has spoken to this. Uh, so obviously they can speak to their operations. They said it was limited. Uh, this was about uh, designating, making sure that designated cut of Hamas, of um, uh, their ability to smuggle weapons, smuggle funds. And it was a, a limited operation. Again, I would let them uh, speak for, their, for themselves. And what I will say is we have been very clear from here about our concerns about a major operation. But, Ed, one thing that the administration has not been that clear on, and it's something that you actually pressed um, them about earlier this week, was, you know, how they define an invasion into Rafa. Because now they are really trying to make the point that, look, this is very limited in scope, it is not major, and therefore it appears that there's not going to be consequences for Israel. Um, is that how you're reading this, too? Yeah, they've, they've, they've twisted themselves up into quite the pretzel. Uh, in trying to justify not only their concern, but then what it is Israel may or may not be doing. Because as we spoke with them yesterday, some kind of air operation was underway over, over Rafah. And then later on, we saw this apparent move into the region and then the taking of the checkpoint overnight, which you would think violates everything they've been talking about over the last several weeks. Mm -hmm. But then today and yesterday, John Kirby, the national security spokesman, sort of reiterated the idea that as long as we're not seeing massive civilian losses, uh, this may be something they have to bear. And that is uh, you know, essentially where it appears to be right now, given that this taking of the crossing appeared to happen with very little resistance and, and certainly no real widespread harm to civilians. We'll see if that holds, depending on whatever it is Israel may decide to do in, in the coming days as the talks continue between Israel and Hamas. Well, that is a really important point, Ed, because um, one way to get at this, to have Israel not invade Rafa in this major way, is uh, a, a successful hostage deal. And we know that CIA Director Bill Burns is representing the U.S. in Cairo for the next round of negotiations. So what is the White House saying about how things are going so far? They are encouraged that Israeli and Hamas representatives will be at these meetings. Obviously, the CIA director is involved, and then the Egyptian and Qatari officials as well. Uh, but that the two warring sides are now involved and plan to be there for these talks is what gives the White House sustained hope that something may ultimately come from this. We'll have to wait and see, obviously. We've been at junctures like this in the last several months before, uh, only to see things fall apart or you know, get torn asunder by some military operation or some other unforeseen attack. Let's see if this holds now. But the public line from here, at least, is some sense of hope and optimism, 
given that everybody's back at a table or will be soon to discuss the particulars. Yeah, well, we will all be watching very closely, Ed. Thank you so much for joining us.